Good morning guys, good afternoon. I hope you guys are doing pretty good. We just covered Unit 2 this whole entire week. Uh, Monday we talked about Unit 2 and we talked specifically about migration. For today's class, for Wednesday's class, we're going to be focusing on theories. Theories that talks about population growth. Unit 2 is all about why do populations grow or why do they decrease and what causes that. Take a look. Uh, for your PDM, make sure you guys take out a piece of paper to take notes. Get a piece of paper, pen and pencil. Once you're done reviewing this PowerPoint, make sure you complete the worksheet from Google Classroom. So our unit for today, the lesson that we're covering for Wednesday is called Topic 2.5 and it's called the Demographic Transition Model. So let's, t let's take a look at that word. Demographic, that means population, that means people. Transition means it's changing, it's moving, and a model is just, think of it like as an idea, as a theory. So the demographic transition model talks about how populations and groups are changing from one stage to the other. Here's our objective. Uh, we're going to explain theories of population growth and decline. So why do populations grow? Why do they decline? And there's two theories. There's two models that uh, geographers use. The first model is called the demographic transition model, which tracks population change. And then first of all, and second of all, there's something called the epidemiological transition, which explains the causes of changing death rates. So the second theory is just wants to answer why there's less people dying now than people back in the day when they had less medicine and less hospitals. Uh, populations grow and change because of mortality, that means people dying. It changes because of fertility, which means they're making more babies. And there's also another factor, migration. How many people are moving in that country? How many people are leaving that country? This right here, guys, this is the model. This is the demographic transition model, and it just tracks how countries start from one stage, the lowest stage, which is the, the least advanced, and then it begins to grow more economically, more industrial, until it reaches stage five. Stage five is the highest stage. It is the most advanced stage a country can be in. And we're gonna be going over each what each stage means. This is the other model the epidemiological model, which just tracks uh, the death changes through the pre, early, late, and post stages. <clears throat> so who created this demographic transition model? What is this demographic transition model based on? It's actually based on Great Britain. The reason why it's based on Great Britain because Great Britain is the first country in the entire world uh, to become industrial. That means they became more advanced. And they became advanced during the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution, Great Britain was able to use machinery uh, to speed up the work process. So they were able to create a bigger, better, more advanced city and country. Uh, Great Britain is the first to pass through all the four stages. Also, the Church of England, which is in Great Britain, is a church that took records of everything. So they, they, so we have a lot of information that tracked how many people were dying and how many people were being born. Of course, just to give you a heads up, this model is not perfect uh, because it only this model only tracks birth and death rates and population total population growth. All right, so demographic transition model, it just tracks how a country grows from stage one and how it gets more and more advanced and what happens at each stage. There's typically four stages, but right now many states, many countries are going into stage five, which we'll talk about in a bit. <clears throat> so the demographic transition model explains population change over time. So stage number one, we have a lot of babies being born, but since there's not a, there's not a lot of good health care and there's not a lot of doctors, all, many of those babies are dying. And during this period, this is before 
machines were created. Take a look. In stage one, we have a lot of babies being born, but since the medicine and uh, and countries in the state do not have those resources, a lot of babies die. So the total population growth stays pretty low. Eventually, countries from stage one are going to be going into stage two. How did they get to stage two? Oh, so here's stage one. Stage one is known as a pre-grain period. Make sure you guys pause this video so you guys can read these three bullet points. It's going to give you a little bit more information. Here's stage two. Uh, we have a lot of babies being born, but now we're starting to see a declining death. Guess what's going on? People are figuring out how to use clean water. There's more healthcare services. People, uh, society is becoming more advanced. So as you can tell right here, the birth rate is really high, but then we see a humongous, a high decline. It all of a sudden, it dips. As death rate begins to dip, the total population begins to increase. There's less people dying, so there's going to be more people. Take a look at this slide guide. Make sure you guys pause the video. Some examples of countries that are in stage 2 will be Guatemala, Vietnam, and the Philippines Islands. Uh, many of the countries that are in stage 2, they focus heavy on agriculture. Let's go to stage 3. Stage three, this is finally when countries begin to use machines. Uh, people are becoming more educated. More people are focusing on getting a job. Women are starting to get a little bit more opportunities, uh, such as education, and they start to get uh, birth control. Uh, take a look, something that I did not cover. Uh, this on the bottom right corner these are called population pyramids this is the population pyramid at a stage three population pyramids just cover uh, how a population is growing if you guys remember a population pyramid if you take a look at this one anyone between 0 to 15 those are the kids uh, from 16 all the way to 64 that's those are the adults that go and work and then from 65 and above, those are the elderly people. So people from 0 to 15 and 65 to above, those are people who are dependents. They are not working. Uh, they rely to be taken care of the people right here in the middle. People who are the ages of 16 all the way to 64. These are the people that are working and they are the ones that are keeping the economy going. As you guys can tell here in stage number three, we have about the same amount of kids and the same amount of adults. It's beginning to square up. <clears throat> so take a look at this demographic transition model. In stage three, guess what? The death rate is going down because our healthcare system is better. There's more machines to take care of better, of, take care of people better but also the birth rate is beginning to decrease. The reason why it's beginning to decrease is because uh, women are starting to work, women are receiving education, women are receiving birth control. So that means uh, instead of the woman uh, getting pregnant, they actually have an option to pursue a career. Let's go to stage four. Oh, make sure, make sure to pause the video right here so you guys can read more about stage number three. Some good examples of countries that are in stage three is Mexico, India, and Ukraine. Stage three is known as a period of industrialization. Let's go to stage four. This is considered the post-industrial period. So this is where countries are already industrialized and they already have something going for them. They're more stable. They have more technology, they have more machines, they have less deaths, they have they actually have less uh, babies being born. So the population is not growing as much, it's very low. If you take a look right here in this population pyramid, 
we're starting to see if you see between 0 to 15 there's not many kids but if you look between the ages 40 between like 40 and 50 we see a, a little bit more adults working and if you take a look at this shape uh, just think of this as a cup shape it's very it's very thin at the bottom but it gets a little bit wider at the top so take a look at stage number four since not many people are dying uh, people in stage four are living up to be 70 and 80 years old the total population stays really high even though families are only having like one or two kids, uh, those kids end up living for a longer period of time. Make sure you pause the video. Some countries are in stage four will be the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. <clears throat> now finally, there is a stage five. Uh, stage five is where there is a decline in growth. That means there is more people are dying and a lot of families are not having enough kids to replace the people that are dying. Just uh, countries that are in stage five just means that even though there is a low death rate, um, families are still not having enough kids to replace those people that are dying. So here we go. Here's stage five. Uh, a great example of a country that's in stage five will be Germany and Japan. Uh, the problem with being in stage five is there's way too many old people and there's not enough people working and there's not enough kids to keep the society and population alive. If a society does not have kids, the population will die eventually. That's why if you see Japan, if you ever visit Japan, there'll be a lot of old people and there won't be enough kids. And finally, guys, here is the last three slides of the PowerPoint. It covers the epidemiological transition uh, model and it just tracks how over time societies and civilizations are getting more advanced in their medicine and in the healthcare. And they're able to control diseases a lot better uh, than people that are in stages one and two. So there's four stages. There's stage stage one is there's a lot of pestilence and famine. Uh, in, sta in stage two, humans are able to control the pandemics a little bit better. And then in stage three, we see a little bit more of the generative and man-made diseases. Uh, such as cancer and heart disease, we see that becomes more prevalent. And then finally, in stage four, there is a delay of ge degenerative and man-made diseases. So uh, societies are able to control cancer, they're able to control heart disease, and etc. Here's another slideshow that gives you a little bit more information about the four stages. Other than that, guys, uh, here's all the information. I'm going to upload the PowerPoint, this recording, and I need you guys to complete the demographic transition model worksheet. I need you guys to figure out what are the birth rates, what are the death rates, and I need you guys to describe what happens at each stage. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to have my office hours. Wednesday, I'm going to change him to, I believe, at 1 o'clock instead of 2. See you guys soon.